Hello, this is Mr. Huff, and this is a mini lecture about commercial wall systems. Uh, this would have been an activity given as homework where you would have to have generated some diagrams and look some stuff up, and rather than you guys doing all the same work, uh, I thought we would just go through all of this together. This will help both my face-to-face -face students and my virtual students this year, so let's take a look. This first wall system that we're looking at is composed of an outer layer of brick followed by a one inch air gap behind the brick, two inches of rigid foam insulation, an eight inch CMU uh, or concrete masonry unit. So this is called a concrete masonry unit wall system. Uh, concrete masonry units, if you ever visit the mile, you'll notice in the engineering space and in the computer labs, the walls that are in the hallway and the exterior walls are built of concrete masonry units. Uh, these are often referred to as cinder blocks, and uh, that makes them go up really quickly and efficiently and inexpensively. So some of the advantages are it's durable. These walls will last for a very long time. They are fireproof because you have uh, stone on the inside and on the outside. They are sound absorbing because they are stone. It doesn't transmit sound very easily. And another thing, this interior, uh, while this diagram shows an interior finish that's unlabeled, uh, it would not require an interior finish because you can just paint right over the concrete masonry unit on the interior and it looks just fine. Disadvantages, it requires skilled labor. You have to get people that know how to position and lay bricks for both the 4-inch exterior and the concrete masonry unit uh, interior design. So, all right. Let's look at this next wall system. It includes a four inch brick exterior, again, a one inch air gap, then two inches of rigid foam insulation, and then cast in place concrete. So how this works is you decide, hey, we're gonna run a wall right here that's um, 18 feet long and nine feet high. You build the form in place and you pour the concrete and reinforce the concrete in place, then remove the form. And then the a lot of times the insulation is used to help design as part of the form and left in place. And then you put brick on the outside. So this kind of uh, wall system is called a cast-in-place concrete wall. Advantages are it's durable and fireproof and sound absorbing, just like the previous one. Uh, it can include these insulated forms, and that's an advantage because you include insulation along with the concrete. Disadvantages are it costs more to put in place. You have two construction trades involved. You have the people that lay bricks and then the people who can pour and reinforce concrete. It's a longer construction time than using concrete masonry units because you have the additional building and deconstruction of the forms for the walls. And another disadvantage is this one does show an interior wall face and you would need to include that. Most designers don't want bare concrete as their interior surface. It's unfinished, it's going to have grooves and that sort of thing in it from the forms. So you would need to include some sort of interior finish like a gypsum board or something like that. The next one is something you'll see very commonly here, and this is called the, uh, the tilt-up concrete. Let's look at the construction. It has a thin brick cast into the concrete fascia on it, and then it has an exterior concrete layer that's two or three inches. So this is just a covering over this outer layer. Then you have rigid insulation in the middle, and then you have the structural concrete uh, in the back, and again, this is going to vary based on its use. If it's supporting two stories or one story, obviously the higher up you go, uh, the more uh, rigid it has to be. So it's going to have to be thicker and be, have more reinforcement. Advantages, just like the previous two, it's durable, fireproof, and sound absorbing. These thin bricks are cast into the wall, so you don't have to have a brick layer there because you just kind of lay them on that surface. And they set into the concrete itself. 
which means you need less skilled labor is involved, so that can contribute to being less expensive. Uh, it's relatively fast on the construction time. You'll see this frequently here where they pour the walls on site and then they lift them up with a crane and bolt them all together at the corners and all of a sudden you have, voila, a Hobby Lobby. Uh, disadvantages, your contractors need to be experienced in this type of construction because it's not the typical kind of thing that most contractors deal with. It can be very dangerous if you lose control of the wall, especially in the tilt-up operation or getting it in place and keeping it there until you have the entire structure built. Uh, like if you only have one corner connected between two walls, uh, that's pretty flimsy and uh, it, you don't want that coming down. Okay, You have to have a lot of special equipment to do this. Uh, you have to have tall cranes and you have to have lots of good... Uh, high-end concrete uh, delivery systems so this initial setup cost is going to be expensive due to special equipment that's needed and again with the interior surface uh, designers usually don't want to have just bare concrete on the inside so it is going to require some sort of interior finish the next wall system is called light gauge metal framing it includes four inches of brick on the outside with a one inch air gap behind that behind the air gap you have a weather resistant sheathing which is usually some form of insulation um, you'll see, or like wrap and something like that underneath this you'll have steel studs this is commercial construction and it's rare to see wood used uh, for fire rating purposes they are going to want you to use steel studs and the sizes are going to vary based on your design uh, in between the studs you're going to have bat insulation at the same thickness of the studs so if this is a six inch wide uh, steel stud you're going to have six inches of uh, insulation and you will have some sort of gypsum board or some sort of interior surface treatment advantages of the, of the, uh, the advantages of this it is much less expensive than doing concrete it's lighter weight than concrete some disadvantageable the, the, some disadvantages because it's not rigid like concrete you can have flexibility in it and that can lead to cracks in the exterior or interior surfaces if you ever get steel a steel wall system in contact with water then you're going to run into con corrosion issues which will lead to uh, connection failures and that sort of thing and that's a problem uh, this kind of construction, you have to have someone that knows how to put brick in place and you need to have someone that knows how to work with the metal framing. So you have two different construction trades involved and this interior is usually drywall and it's not a real durable surface. It's great for residential, but in institutional applications, it tends to show its wear very quickly. And the last one I want to talk about is a curtain wall. And here's an example of what a curtain wall looks like. It has two materials in it. It has the glazing, which is the glass that you see, and then the mullions. And the mullions are the metal framework that holds up the glass. So keep in mind these work in uh, commercial structures where the actual structure itself, like you can see this heavy beam here, and these structural members here in this curve, those are the parts that are doing the load bearing. This is just like a curtain hanging over that. It's not structural in any way. It's just glass being held in place. It does not contribute to load bearing. Advantages, you get a lot of great daylight, a lot of good views. Aesthetics value is very high on a curtain wall. Uh, they look fantastic. Uh, disadvantages, like I said, it's not load bearing. These walls are weak. They will not sustain load from load loads from the building structure. Uh, they require maintenance to maximize service lifetime. Because keep in mind, you've just got a piece of glass between you and the environments. Uh, sometimes these will be multiple panes, and you have to make sure that if those ever get a leak, you have to go in and replace those, and that sort of thing. So. Those, that's just a quick overview of the commercial wall systems that we're looking at for the Lundberg Library Project. We are using concrete masonry unit design. Uh, that's what we would choose. For those of you who are virtual, that's why we're saying the exterior wall is 9 inches thick. 
And then for those of you using Revit, you can open up that wall and uh, look at the construction and preview the layers. It should look very similar to this. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.